Here's the gamma function, and I already have a video for this introduction to gamma function, so you should watch that if you don't know the properties of the gamma function. In this video, I want to talk about the digamma function, which is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function. You take the log of the gamma and you differentiate, and by the chain rule, this is same as saying gamma prime over gamma. And this is usually denoted by psi of x, Greek letter psi. If you differentiate the psi once, uh, the resulting function is called the trigamma function. And if you differentiate further, you get tetragamma, pentagamma, polygamma functions. Uh, these are further derivatives of psi of x. Now, the gamma function uh, can have the integral representation uh, using the integral representation of gamma of x. To do that, let's first figure out what the derivative of the gamma function is. Uh, to differentiate this, uh, remember we're differentiating by x, so t is just the constant, and uh, you're trying to differentiate with respect to this variable here. Now I'm going to rewrite this, t of x minus 1, as t to the x times 1 over t, and just focus on the derivative of t to the x. Um, remember that uh, while e to the x prime is e to the x, a to the x prime is a to the x ln of a. And this is more generic than this. Uh, if you have a equals to e, then you get ln of e, which is 1. So you recover this specific formula. Now, because in our calculation t is a constant, uh, therefore t to the x prime would be t to the x times ln of t. And that's where this ln of t is. Um, so, using this as the gamma prime, and because psi is gamma prime over gamma, uh, I can write the psi as the ratio of two integ integrals. And uh, using this, we can attempt to get some properties of psi of x. Uh, the first fact I want to talk about is what happens if you plug in 1. Uh, I should have put 1 here. Uh, see, these are the formulas, and you're replacing x by 1. And because t t 1 minus 1 is t to 0, this, just, just, this is just 1. So you just have an integral of e to the negative t, ln of t dt. And the bottom one here is really gamma of 1, which I show that this is equal to 1 in my previous introduction to gamma function. So you can watch that to see why this is true. And then uh, if you have this, uh, this integral can be shown to be same as negative of lowercase gamma, where gamma is called the euler mascherani constant. And uh, the gamma is defined as the limit of this uh, strange thing. And uh, the proof that this integral is equal to negative gamma is quite involved, so uh, I, want, I don't want to uh, spend too much time on this yet. So I will prove this at the end uh, but you don't really need to know the proof, I guess. Um, now the second property is psi of x plus 1 equals to psi of x plus 1 over x, and this comes from the fact that gamma of x plus 1 is equal to get x times gamma of x. You take this identity, differentiate both sides, and the right side, because this is a product of two functions, you end up using the product rule, which means differentiate the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And uh, once you get this result, you can divide both sides by gamma of x plus 1 equals to x gamma of x again. Uh, so I'm dividing the right side by this, whereas the left side is div divided by gamma x, x plus 1. And the result is that you have uh, gamma prime of x plus 1 over gamma of x plus 1, but that is exactly psi of x plus 1 because psi of x, as we wrote before, it's gamma prime of x over gamma of x, so psi of x plus 1 will be gamma prime of x plus 1 over gamma of x plus 1, so uh, that's why you get psi of x plus 1 on the left side. On the right side, we just cancel a few things, right? and the result is that, again, you get this psi of x, whereas uh, you have 1 over x added to it, so that's how you 
you prove this identity. Now, uh, combining these two facts that we've just figured out, you can come up with uh, other values of psi, which, for example, psi of 2, uh, if you put x as 1, then uh, you have psi of 2 equals to psi of 1 plus 1 over 1. That's what you have, and we have psi of 1 equals to negative gamma. Uh, you can play the same game again. Psi of 3 is psi of 2 plus 1 over 2, and replacing psi of 2 by negative gamma uh, plus 1 over 1. So this much is psi of 2. Uh, you get this. And then doing the same thing again, you get this. And you, s you now see a pattern, right? The pattern is uh, that psi of n is equal to negative gamma plus h of n minus 1. Where h of n minus 1, this is called the harmonic number. Harmonic number is like sum of 1 over uh, 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on and so on until 1 over n. Uh, but here uh, you just stop 1 before the number. So uh, psi of 4 is you add up only up to 1 over 3. So uh, this is negative gamma plus uh, h of n minus 1 uh, because it, this, this has to be 1 less than this. Okay. So this is what I really needed uh, because I need to use this for uh, the, the, the later uh, Bessel functions. So I'm going to use it later for that. And uh, actually that's all I have to say about the, the, the gamma function. But since I promised that I want to show you that this integral is equal to negative gamma, uh, let me try to try to prove this. I uh, actually uh, found this proof uh, from Math Stack Exchange, so I'm going to put a link in the description where I found the, the proof. Okay, uh, but I, I just filled in some more details. So if you have trouble following that uh, Math Stack Exchange, you can hear me how uh, how it really is done uh, with all the details added. So first, I want to show that e to the negative t is equal to limit of n going to infinity of this here, 1 minus t over n to the n minus 1 power. And to prove this, you first uh, prove the following, uh, follow, uh, first evaluate the following limit, which is uh, log of 1 minus t over n to the nth power. Uh, this limit, uh, because n can come up in front of log like that and once you have that you can do a change of variable as x equals to 1 over n and because n goes to infinity x must go to 0 plus right uh, on the other hand uh, see x equals to 1 over n means n is equal to 1 over x and and therefore this n here can be replaced by 1 over x, or you can think of it like divided by x. And uh, also, t times 1 over n can be written as t times x. The nice thing about this is now it's in a fraction form. Uh, if you have a fraction, then uh, one way to evaluate limits of a fraction is by applying the L'Hopital's, right? Uh, let's check whether the L'Hopital's condition uh, is satisfied. So you need this to be either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And indeed, if you plug in 0 here, you get ln of 1 on the top, which is 0. And when you plug in 0 in the bottom, you get 0 on the bottom too. So you do have that this is 0 over 0 type. That means I can use L'Hopital's to further compute. And the derivative of ln of 1 minus tx using the chain rule will give you 1 over 1 minus tx times negative t. And the derivative of x, of course, is 1. And uh, after that, when you plug in x equal to 0, this is just 1, and you end up with negative t. And once you have that this is negative t, then we can now figure out the, this limit, which is uh, first rewrite this as a product of these two things. And uh, because this power is exponential of the log of 1 minus t over n to the nth power, and uh, uh, that's because 
So exp means e to the power. So this is just another way of take, uh, writing e to the ln of 1 minus t over n to the nth power. And uh, uh, this is same as the previous one because e and ln cancel. Okay. So I just wrote this uh, this way because I know that this limit is negative t. We just proved it. So that's exp of negative t. And while uh, when you when you send n to infinity, t over infinity will be 0. So you have 1 to the negative 1 power, which is just 1. So that just becomes 1, whereas this becomes negative t. So you have exp of negative t, uh, and that is e to the negative t. So this identity is now proved. Okay, so what do you do with this? This is only step one. I have to now use this to evaluate this integral. Uh, what we do is we rewrite this uh, integral as the following limit. We rewrite e to the negative t as this limit and also uh, rewrite n as infinity. And uh, uh, I'm doing something here which is not so safe, which is uh, uh, this limit should really be inside and this should be infinity, but I'm bringing it outside and, and rewriting that as, that as n. And uh, that really requires something called dominated convergence theorem, uh, but uh, we'll just assume that uh, uh, this does work, okay? So assuming that this does work, uh, now let's continue. We're going to do the following substitution. We will say u is equal to this thing inside to make the integral easier. Then what happens is that if I have u equals to 1 minus t over n, I can move this t over n this side and u to the other side, and you get t over n equals to 1 minus u. Multiplied by n, we get t equals to n times 1 minus u. Furthermore, if I differentiate both sides, we get dt equals to derivative of 1 minus u is negative 1, so negative 1 times n is the derivative of the right side, and you attach the du. And then, uh, since this is a definite integral, we also need to figure out what happens with the boundary. So when t is equal to n, we have u equals to 1 minus n over n, which is 1 minus 1, that's equal to 0, right? And when t is equal to 0, you get u equals to 1 over 0 over n, which is 1. So your, your bounds will become 1 to 0, with uh, this will become u to the n minus 1. ln of t is equal to n times 1 minus u. And dt will be du times negative n. I can pull the negative n outside because that's a constant multiple. Uh, but since uh, 1 to 0, 1 is bigger than 0, so let's switch this to be 0 to 1 at the cost of uh, consuming this minus sign. Uh, hopefully you, you know this fact. a to b is same as negative b to a. If you switch the order, you get a minus sign. So I'm using the fact to reverse this, and uh, the result of the u substitution is written right here. Okay, I can further continue this by uh, using the property that log of a product can be split into two logs. So you have log of n and uh, log of 1 minus u. And now I can split this into two integrals where log of n can be brought outside because there's a constant multiple. Uh, on the other hand, this seems uh, pretty, uh, pretty scary. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll continue. Okay, so what do we have? The first thing is the first integral, that's easy because integral of u to the n minus 1 du is 1 over n u to the nth power, right? So 1 over n u to the nth power, when you plug in 1 and 0, you just get 1 over n. So this is just 1 over n, which cancels with this n. That just leaves you with ln of n. That's nice because uh, that's exactly what we need here. On the other hand, uh, for the second integral, you need to use the Taylor series of ln of 1 minus u. Okay. So first, uh, notice that ln of 1 minus u prime is 1 over 1 minus u times negative 1 uh, by the uh, chain rule. And 1 over 1 minus u 
is uh, this is the uh, formula a over 1 minus r equals to a plus a r plus a r squared plus so on and so on. This is called the infinite geometric series with a being 1 and u being r, r being u. So uh, this series is same thing as 1 plus u plus u squared plus u cubed and so on and so on. And then if you use this, so you multiply a minus to the entire thing and you integrate both sides. One integrates to u, u integrates to u squared over two, u squared integrates to u cubed over three and so on and so on, okay? And then I pull the minus down here. And then I multiply this inside and here's the result. And these I can actually use, again, the power rule to integrate u to the n integrates to one over n plus 1 times u to the n plus 1, and then you plug in 1 and 0, so you get this, this, and this. So that part you can verify. It's the same kind of power rule. And uh, what we want to do with this is now rewrite this as a, uh, as a sigma form. It's the sum of, it, it all looks like this. This number and this number is the same, right? So it's 1 over n plus k times k. So that's what I wrote here. And then I can rewrite this into here by something called partial fraction expansion. Now, if you know partial fraction expansion, you can actually try to do it by writing this, this thing as a over k and b over n plus k and finding the a and b. Or if you don't know partial fraction expansion, you can just simply try to simplify this right side by making common denominators and simplifying, and you'll see that they are, these are exactly the same. And then I can multiply the n inside to get this here. And uh, now this part requires some more, more uh, explanation. This is what we call telescoping series. For the sake of calculation uh, demonstration, let's just say n is something like 5. So what happens when n is 5? Well, that's like 1 over 1 minus 1 over 5 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 5 plus 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 5 over 3 plus 1 over 4 minus 5 over fi uh, 5 plus 4 plus 1 over 5 minus 5 plus 5 and then 1 over 6 minus 5 over 5 plus 6 and so on and so on, right? And this is what we call a telescoping series because you have negative 1 over 6, which cancels with this 1 over 6. And this is going to cancel with the next one, which is 1 seventh. This will cancel with the next one, and so on and so on. So you'll see that eventually everything afterwards will cancel, and you just have the sum of 1 plus 1 over 2 all the way up to 1 over 5. So when n is 5, you get what all the way up to 1 over 5, right? So you see that this infinite sum actually uh, becomes a telescoping series where this just ends at 1 through n. So that's why you, we get this. And if you compare this with the one above, after distributing the minus sign, this is exactly negative gamma. So that's how the pr uh, theorem is proved. And that's, that was a lot of work. But uh, there are other kind of uh, approaches which are easier, but they require some knowledge of complex analysis. So. Uh, I just use this one that I found from Stack Exchange.